There was the body, there was evil women, there was sex. Whew, well, now we're getting to something a little bit more gruesome and a little bit more um, unhappy, and that is disease and cultural history of disease in particular. No one knows about this except me. There was a great cat massacre, July 1916 in New York. I want to take you back to 1971, September. 1971, Ebony Magazine published this remarkable article that broke so many taboos. It was a, ma a moment of what can only be described as acute embarrassment, um, followed quickly by um, a feeling of absolute terror. The Minority Action Committee, MAC, of ACT UP drew attention to racism within the organization led by gay men of colour, Mac enlisted the support of Sister Love, the Black Church, the Nation of Islam, and other organisations for people of colour to argue that finding a magic bullet, that is, prioritising drugs into bodies, was less important strategically than transforming cultures of discrimination and inequality. They were upset with the assumption that people of colour were drug users and by ACT UP's failure to consult black and Latino com communities. Okay, so the blood condition known in medical texts as sickle cell disease is um, not uncommon. One in 10 black Americans possess the sickle cell trait, and one in 375 develop the condition. In England, it affects one out of every 2,000 births, and one in 70 babies possess the gene. Many of these risks are, of course, tightly tied to notions of being truly feminine and female. Most obviously, they are also tied to notions of feminine beauty, slender, and the natural female body as the reproductive one. In its most, I think, dangerous form, it stigmatizes women who stand against heteronormativity. Now, there's a gender aspect here which I find really interesting. Um, in literature, remember we're talking literature here, we're not talking about reality on the street. Female consumptives were portrayed as being transformed by TB into supremely aesthetic, passive, spiritual creatures. My point is simple. People are much more than their memories. This point is nicely expressed by queer literary theorist Jennifer uh, Rowe in 2022, when she argues that although well-intentional approaches um, about eradicating the disease and so on, can unknowingly perpetuate and reinforce hierarchies of ableism. The belief that ably bodied minds are superior to disabled ones. Listening to those who are living with dementia reminds us, I think, of the need to develop models of selfhood that are liberated from cognitive abilities.